Hi there. I'll just finish this, get another pint. Just let that settle a bit, I think. Well, welcome back to my YouTube channel and cheers. Now I know it's about three or four months since I last produced a YouTube video I'm hoping I can remember what to do you soon uh, get out of touch with uh, working the cameras and getting everything set up and never mind the editing that's to come but I'm sure it will all come back it was a uh, it was good to have a rest and uh, get away from YouTube I say a rest, I haven't had a rest at all. I'm not the sort of person that has rests. I got lots of outstanding jobs done. I had loads of gar jobs around the garden and house. They weren't so interesting, got, got rid of them. I had a few jobs on cars, various uh, brake pads and discs and they always seem to be wearing out. If it's not mine, my wife's and my son's, uh, forever seem to be changing brake pads but that that was enjoyable I enjoyed doing that uh, it was nice when the weather was dry not so good now uh, take it to the garage I think uh, um, through winter definitely just have a, a quick slurp now one of the, the main jobs I've been doing which I'll show you in a bit, I've converted the other room adjacent to the pub. If you think this was one big hut, I built the pub on the first lockdown, whatever that was, uh, and kept the other half as a garden shed. Well, I managed to get rid of all them garden tools and stuff like that, and I've made proper use of it and converted that to, I suppose you could say a bit like a tap room come bar that we use in summertime to take drinks outside but uh, it's not complete but well, majority of the work's done and I will show you that in a little bit I think the other thing that has been occupying a lot of my time well I will have mentioned me and my wife we enjoy going ballroom dancing I know while camping, exploring, ballroom dancing, they don't all go together. But it's something we've we've done for probably the last 10 years or so. And we've made a lot of friends and it is a, it is a great way of passing uh, the evenings on. But due to lockdown and not dancing, we forgot all our steps. So we are... Well, we have been and we still are in the process of relearning them all. I'll tell you again a bit more about it um, later on. Now, I have produced uh, YouTube videos for about the last six or seven years and I've enjoyed nearly all of that. It was just recently, I thought, uh, I just wanted a change. I wanted a rest, really, from producing videos. It was a bit like you felt obliged to produce a video. So that was one reason for having a rest and to get all my jobs out of the way. But I do enjoy making the videos. I, I am retired and it's kept me busy through retirement. Um, it, it gives you something to be interested. Each, each video you've got to like read up, learn about the area or the tunnel you're going to explore or whatever so that 
it just keeps you so occupied and I've enjoyed it and I must admit I have missed that part of it over these last few months. I mean my, as you will know my previous videos majority of wild camping I did go through a period of a few years where I explored all the underground tunnels and drains in I think Sheffield South Yorkshire area and I've run out of places to explore but that was a totally different type of filming and I enjoyed that whether I do that again I don't know because there's nothing really locally for me to do and I enjoyed I uh, went on quite a few train trips, a, a lot in the UK and ventured into Europe and I had planned to do a lot more rail trips but I'm afraid, as you know, due to what's happened uh, that sort of um, put on hold for the time being I was actually planning, my wife didn't want to fly so I said I'll plan a road trip through France we can catch the ferry, stop off at various places, should be pretty safe. Anyway, with what's happening now, um, I've had to sort of put that on hold, which is, I'm getting a bit older, time is passing by, and it's, this is like, one, probably the, we're into the third year when I could say we haven't had a proper holiday abroad. We've been in this country not abroad and it ain't looking so good at the moment but fingers crossed things will get better and eventually we will get get somewhere hopefully later in the year very nice pint it's actually Abbeydale Moonshine now, Abbeydale Brewery is a local brewery in Sheffield, produce some beautiful ales. Moonshine has always been one of my favourites, and that is what I drink when we go out to the pubs and that. If I saw Moonshine, I'd go for that. They didn't cater much for, you could say, people like myself that like to buy the beer in like 10 or 20 litres and uh, keep it in the, the pub sheds and that. They sell it in cans and they sell it in um, those mini pins, whatever they call them, the little um, 5 litre tins. Party cans as we knew them. 5 litre party cans in the 1970s. Uh, but no, you, you you can't go to the brewery really and buy it in a box like, like I get from uh, other places. Normally I will get my beer from Kellam Island Brewery and they sell it me. I can order it online, go down the next day, 10 litre, 20 litre polypin, great service, goes inside the fridge like. But I like to try something different. So you can't get the moonshine from the brewery, but... Near to me, just down at Millhouse's Abbeydale, is Archer Road Beer Stop. Not shop, stop. Archer Road Beer Stop. And they, he's a bit like a middleman. So he buys you a 72 litre firkin direct from the brewery, which they'll sell you. Probably 100 quid or something like that. 72 pies. And then he sells it on. So I take a 16 pint barrel down, plastic barrel. Puts me 16 pints in, charge me 2.40 a pint, which well, is a bit more than I'd normally pay, but it's very convenient. It is what I might describe as bright beer. So it, uh, there's no sediment, you bring it home, connect it, you can drink it straight away. It possibly won't keep as long. It's only 16 pints, it ain't going to keep that long, is it? Kellum, when I go down to Kellum Brewery, it's called rough beer because it's got all the sediment in. So you have to let it settle for 24 hours, but it does keep longer. I can probably get two to three weeks out of the beer from Kellum from the beer stop on Archer Road. I get probably about a week, 10 days, but biting 16 pint batches and uh, it's not too bad, but it's very convenient, and I must admit, Moonshine is a nice beer.
Now, it's always nice to do a video from my pub shed. One, it's easy. I'm indoors, there's no wild weather, there's no rain, there's no wind, it's nice and warm, and I've got a, a hand pump within arm's reach. But I will be getting back into what this channel is about, wild camping really. That's what it started as, and that is the core, core of the business, ooh, very technical. But that is the core of my YouTube channel, is probably wild camping. I know I go off on different tangents, um, and the beer, the, 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 the pub shed has become part of it now. But yeah, I am hoping to get out wild camping. Um, I'll probably go up my local hills ringing low around that area. I've got quite a few areas I like to pitch up there and venture up to Kinder and Bleak Low. Now I haven't been out for probably four months or so and I listen to the weather and it's howling and the rain's coming down and it's cold so it might take me a little bit to get back into it. I'm sure once I've got my boots on and my rucksack on my bike and I'm trekking up them paths, I'll be fine. But uh, it does feel like I've got to get on a little bit further to sort of get out while camping. But I will be back out at some time. I'd like to think the next video will be a wild camp somewhere. So I'm going to finish this off. I'm going to pour myself another pint and I'll, I'll show you around the existing pub for people that haven't seen it and then the improvements I've done next door. Every pint is a work of art. It's a pleasure to pull each pint. Look at that. Just beautiful, isn't it? I'll just show you around my pub. Uh, I know I've shown this before, but for anybody who's not seen it. So down there, we've got uh, my music system. There's an amplifier underneath and a record deck there. I've also got four 100-watt uh, speakers around this room. So get that on and it's fantastic. Now the bar area has not really changed much. It's basically... How it's always been. The only thing I recently bought was that um, Everard's drip tray, the green one there. It's a uh, I find once you pull the pint and it's dripping, it's a great place to put it. Only four quid on eBay. Probably paid more for postage. But uh, it's nice, nice little addition. You can. That's the fun of it. You can keep adding bits all the time. Now if we come over here, you can see. Jane is still there. She looks after all the snacks. And behind that cupboard is the fridge. Which is actually keeping the beer uh, warm at the moment. 11, 11 degrees. And you can probably see the light of the thermostat down in the bottom. That controls the temperature. Now, you've got to decorate your walls with something. So I got a few pub mirrors on. And I got these beautiful pictures of uh, some 1950s Hollywood actresses. People have seen these and most people get them all right, apart from the lady in the centre. The top one and left is Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe. And on the right hand side, the Sophia Loren. And the lady in the middle, black and white one, is Jean Turney. Another beautiful actress from the, the 1950s. I did uh, get a couple of bits of furniture. I got that chair down there. 
That's known as a wheelback Windsor chair. Very comfortable. You can see it gets its name from the, the wheel in the, the back of the chair. But it's, a, it's like a classic pub chair, that. So I've got one on the, the other side as well. So they they were new additions. And I might add, I made that cushion myself. It's uh, not easy. I used my sewing machine, but you had to put a zip in the back and then you can get the foam in and zip it up. So it was quite intricate, but I had great fun making it. And I dare say I learned quite a bit as well. So the rest of the pub has uh, sort of stayed, stayed the same. I think the only addition I got was more cushions. My wife was going to throw those four cushions out and I saw them. I said, burgundy colour, perfect for my pub. I'll have them. So I, I, I rescued them before she threw them. And now uh, we've got cushions in the pub. So yeah, just a variety of glasses up there. And... Oh, down here, I don't think I've told you about this. This is our, uh, ooh, our Bridge North Barbel Fishing Trophy. Me and the lads from work, this was probably, ooh, late 80s into the 90s. We used to go down to Bridge North fishing for barbel. And uh, whoever caught the biggest fish got the trophy. Anyway, I've kept it, and what better place to put it than in my pub. So, that's the lounge bar of my pub. It's compact, it's warm, and it's very cosy. Gonna have a look next door now, in my new tap room, come garden bar. Up to now, I've clad all the walls and ceiling in 12mm ply. It's all been painted, all the woodwork, stained, teak and varnished. All needs finishing off, but that's the enjoyable bit when you start uh, putting all your, your beer trays, beer towels, pictures on the wall. But I'll, I'll do that at a later time. Now one thing I have done, which is the main feature of the room, is a big panoramic photograph. So I'm going to step in there reposition the camera and lighting and tell you a bit about the room and I'll show you my my uh, panoramic picture to try and uh, point out uh, a few features on it. I've still got my toilet over here this is invaluable I think uh, any pub shed wants a toilet. There's my pub sheds at the top of the garden. It, it saves trekking all the way back down to the house. I'll just show you this one. On a previous video, video somebody commented about this and I didn't realise it. But look at that for the ideal poster for a toilet. Gone with the wind. What a classic. If I'd have known that, I'd have put a massive big poster up. But I just didn't realise it when I put them up. Just perfect. Shut that up. Over in the corner, down there, you can see there's a little bar area. Got that blue fridge come freezer underneath. That's for lager and uh, cold drinks and with the freezer on top I can uh, produce ice as well keep that frozen on top of that little bar is my new addition it's a perfect draft it's like a, a keg style pump uh, very compact and it'll produce uh, or should I say it'll dispense like keg like beers like lager a few pale ales things like that i won't tell you much about it now i'll i'll save that for a future video uh, and with it being cold it produces cold beer it's it's used mainly in summer time now the main feature in this bar is this 
panoramic photograph of my favourite area of Derbyshire. It's the area where I do most of my wild camping. I'll tell you a bit more about this panoramic picture I made. I know it's not perfect, but uh, at least it reminds me of the area where I go camping such a lot. It's actually taken from Bamford Edge. I took about probably a dozen photographs, then printed them out on a big A1 printer I've got in the loft. It's not mine, it's my son's, but he's left it there and sort of forgotten about it. So I use it for printing pictures like this and, and posters and things like that. So basically printed all the pictures, stuck them together on a hard board and put it up on the wall. A bit like uh, uh, putting wallpaper up. But it is such a beautiful area. It is basically my playground. I'll try and point out a few of the, uh, the features. Starting over here, I will point with my stick. That is Derwent Edge. Some fantastic views from up there. And if you go further along Derwent, you eventually come to Howden Edge. And that'll take you out to Marjorie Hill, High Stones. And then eventually Bleaklow, which you can see on the horizon there. If we follow the horizon, I reckon that will be higher shelf stones there, top of the, the snake, and that is where the overexposed B-29 Super Fortress crash site is, well worth a visit. So that's all bleak low, and that is the place to go if you want to be on your own and have a bit of isolation. It's just beautiful up there. Now you can say the valley is dominated by Lady Bower Reservoir. And if we follow that up here, just up there is Derwent uh, Reservoir. And that has a real significance that, because in 1943, that is where 617 Squadron practiced um, in readiness for the Dam Busters raid on the Ruhr Valley uh, in Germany. So if you could imagine in that, that period of time, 1943, there was probably a dozen Lancaster bombers circling this area, taking it in turns to do dummy bomb runs down the Derwent Valley to, to practice in readiness for the raid. It must have been a fantastic sight. Every 10 years, they do come back and they tend to they fly the, uh, the Lancaster down. So the next one would be May 2023. I hope they do put on a, a bit of a show. That would be fantastic. So like I say, the valley is dominated by the reservoir. And then as we will come further over, and that is the start of Kinder Scout. You could say that is the north edge of Kinder. That is an absolutely fantastic place to camp. One of my favourites. The views there, they are unbelievable. So yeah, so that is all Kinder Scout. This is like the southern edge of Kinder. A lot more sort of busy in a way with people. And that's Grinsbrook Knoll there. But again, a beautiful area to walk and to camp. I'll just show you these last two features. That's Windhill Pike overlooking uh, the dam. Uh, behind it somewhere will be Loose Hill and that is Mamtor, Mother Hill as it's uh, transcribes to. Again, all fantastic hills to walk up and fantastic views. So that basically covers what is my playground such a beautiful area oh while we're here i'll just show you down here i don't know if you can make that out but that uh, that bit of green is lady boa reservoir dam wall and just point to it just there that is what is locally known as a plug hole it's the overflow to the reservoir 
The water's pretty low there, so it's exposed. But that is massive. And if you look at one of my videos a couple of years ago, I actually went down there. I got in the bottom and walked up. It's the biggest pipe I have ever stood in. At least 15, 20 foot in diameter underneath the, the dam wall. It was a fantastic explore. All right, I shouldn't have been there, but sometimes you've just got to do these things. So that basically covers this picture I wanted to show you. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm gagging for another pint. So I'm off into lounge bar. I'm going to pull myself another pint. I'll see you there. A little bit more work to be done next door. Main feature was getting that uh, panoramic picture up, but I know the walls are looking a bit bare. But yeah, that's part of the fun of it buying the stuff you can put on the walls to decorate them the beer trays, the beer towels, and photographs, pictures. That's all part of the fun of having uh, a shed pub. You can uh, decorate it exactly how you want now these last four months have just flown by i don't know where the time has gone like you say i got all my jobs done but where is it all gone i must admit a lot of the time is spent being spent if i can say dancing Basically, me and my wife, we, we started dancing about 10 years ago when I retired. I think I retired 31st of December, the 4th of January, when we went to our first dance, which was Modern Drive, which we enjoyed, did it for six months. We danced with a lot of different people. We went to ballroom, and from there we progressed the sequence all different aspects of dancing but very very enjoyable it is nothing it is completely nothing like you see on Strictly Come Dancing on the TV nothing like that at all the dancing we do is normal social ballroom and sequence dancing we spend about 50% of the time dancing 50% just chatting the social side of it uh, which which is great because we, we might go three to four nights a week and what would you be doing you'd be sat in looking at TV we go out and we go and dance and we chat to people and it is, it, it is so enjoyable and we've made so many friends by going um, going dancing and that Oh, this is such a nice pint. Moonshine. So, all I can say is I hope this has updated you of what I've been doing for the last four months. I'm sorry I've not produced any videos, but I just didn't feel like doing it. And, and my heart wasn't in it mainly. I've had a little bit of a quiet time got my head round stuff, got my jobs all done and I'm ready now to return to YouTube. So I'll say cheers and uh, hopefully I'll see you in a month, that's what it normally is and we'll be hopefully in my Sulu tent wild camping somewhere. So cheers for now, see you in a, see you in a bit, bye then.